Good morning, good morning. Oh, here we are. Here's our vegetable man. Yasai no Madu Yasu. <clears throat> we have a ringside seat for the exciting action. <laughs> it's a different driver than the guy who used to come here or so ago. The previous guy was, was really quite short and he had kind of back problems. He was really having trouble picking up the boxes. So perhaps uh, a different person has taken over. Box of vegetables to the beef restaurant next door. The previous guy parked here and he delivered to two or three different restaurants. This guy's parking here, parking there, parking there. I don't know, different route. It says Yasai Vegetables, Yasai no Madu Yasu. Madu Yasu would be the company's name. Yasu, it could have the feeling of Yasu, inexpensive, cheap. Maybe that's their, their brand image, I don't know. And it's quiet again. Okay, Monday morning in a sack sack. Morning, morning. It's not going to be a quiet day here, though. It's the uh, end of a four-day long weekend. It's the last day in the long golden week holidays. It's been really mixed. The office has been gone. They're going to be dragged back to work tomorrow morning. <laughs> a new old shirt. And I was getting, not hassle, if I say hassle, that's the wrong word to use, the... The staff were ragging me yesterday. Dave, you just keep wearing the same shirt over and over and over again. I got three shirts. I got three clips. The washing goes round and around. But yeah, whatever. There's other stuff in the drawer. This was a gift. Somebody, I don't know, when, is, when was the, the deal? It's on a Rugby World Cup. Oh, it says it's 2019. I don't know. This was a gift from a, a somebody who visited, a YouTube viewer, had visited that year when the Rugby World Cup was on. We had chatted about it, this and that, and he later sent, uh, sent this gift. Very nice. I don't, I, I, he sort of customized it too. <laughs> 2019, it must have been the year we started the Eight Views of Cats series, I guess. So he picked the number eight, whatever. So, and it's very nicely made. And I don't remember who it was. I don't know. So yeah, Sadako was saying, please wear some different clothes, you know. So fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I'll try and be a good boy. Someone says, we don't believe you ever bought a piece of your own clothing. I have. That's not fair. I have. Sometimes, somewhere. Anyway, let's go. Let's do some work. What we're doing is we're going to, oh, that's for show and tell. Show and tell is going to be uh, uh, fun today. Again, no no spectacular socks. Uh, we're going to pick up on the theme, a couple of things. We got these uh, small hagaki size prints a week or so ago. The ladies yesterday, the past few days over the weekend, have been crazy busy soaking prints off. We're going to look at some of these and talk about that. Then we're going to pick up on the theme, the prints we got the other day, the ones that I said came from Takamizawa, who got their roots in forgeries. But we're going to pick up something else from the, from the collection today and talk about forgeries. That'll be our show and tell. It's forgery day at show and tell. But in the meantime, let's get to work. I finished off the block that we were doing on the stream the other day. This is a block that will do background color on the bottom part of the image and it will do the background tone or one of the tones for the water on the top part. So we'll grab another one today. What we're gonna do is we're going to use one of the sheets that I printed and we're gonna combine it again with Photoshop data. We did this the other day. Remember what we did? I took the I took the sheet that I printed from the key block and I pasted it on top or laid on top part of the Photoshop data. And we're going to do the same thing today. We're going to put Photoshop data on top of this one. Oh, number eight has a meaning. I didn't know this. Look at this. In rugby, the number eight is... 
<laughs> the number eight is an important player responsible for putting in big tackles. That's not going to be me. Carrying the ball through the defensive line and providing support to the backs. Good readers of the game. I'll buy that. And their strength and power can make a big impact. Okay, I'll buy that. <laughs> I know nothing about rugby. I wasn't a rugby fan. The guy had been here with a bunch of friends. I guess he found out I was English, British. And they nearly, who won the tournament that year? Just a minute. This was pre-pandemic. Just a minute. I got it. I got this. I got this. It was 2019. Of course, the Brits, the English team, not British, English team, went to the final and lost to somebody. I don't remember that part of it. New Zealand? No, they did badly that time. South Africa, can I? I don't remember. It would be pretense, but I don't remember. Everybody's looking this up. Okay, again, we're mixing real data with Photoshop data. The reason we don't print this out from Photoshop, paste it down, and start carving is because that many of the lines on here, or the, the zones on here, were determined by Photoshop data. The lines we really need to match now are the carved lines because I changed things as we went over and carved it. Some lines became thicker, thinner, slightly moved, slightly misplaced, slightly changed. So the original Photoshop data can no longer be trusted exactly. Now we need it to get the rough outline. These lily pads here, that's fine. They can just go there. But the ones that butt up, look at this. We've got leaf color here. So this part and this part, I actually don't need to transfer from Photoshop. I can color those in. We're going to do a mix here. Oh, South Africa, yeah. I guess the coloring isn't just leaves, it's leaves and stems. So those parts are done. Looking good. This 
Some of our friends going on auctions again, are they? I know if this is who I think it is, let me click the auction link here you're showing. Just one sec. Hang on a moment. Yeah, we know who this is. This is a print dealer in America. He uh, purchases prints from us and puts them on auction. This one seems to be spoiled. What's the deal on the right hand side there? There's a mark. It's one of our prints for sure. You know, people buy prints from here. You know, we, we can't stop them. People buy prints from us and uh, sell them. Okay, I think we'll use the back of that previous block. We'll just use the other side. And we'll be carving now. We'll be leaving this red part for leaves. We'll be leaving the black for the pattern on the tanuki. And we'll be leaving the pattern here. Let's go. The microphone. some defects in the block so we have to make sure that's okay that falls out of the image so we're all right here I said it's the end of the holiday now we've had a long long 10 day holiday period here in Japan and this is the last day of it now I was speaking to the guy at the theater, the little theater down the street here, the one where the vaudeville comedians do, you know, and he said it's been a very, very good time. Last weekend and this weekend, he said they did very well. And it's one of the times a year they will do, at year-end they do very well, and at the Golden Week they do very well. It's one of his top times. So I was speaking to him yesterday afternoon, and I said, one more day, right? And he said, no, tomorrow's nothing, tomorrow. People aren't thinking about going to the theater, the last day of the holiday weekend. And he said, There's, they're not going to be doing much business. So the district will be, will be busy, but people are not thinking about heading out for entertainment and action and activities. They've done that now for the past nine days. And the last day of the holiday is pretty much a, a more of a relaxed day. I hadn't thought about it that way, but he says that's, that's their business pattern, their business model. They don't expect to do much business today at all. They will be open, they will be doing as normal, but they don't expect it to be a big day. For us, it was a big day yesterday. I know both number of visitors, uh, number of friends, and the register was big. Today, we, we really don't know what to expect. We can never tell. Our business here in our own, own organization it doesn't really depend on Japanese holidays so much. Visitors from overseas, they're here any day of the week, any day of the year. So our own flow of traffic here doesn't really depend so much on either what day it is or what day of the week it is or whether it's a holiday or not. We've tried. We've tried to find patterns so that we can be ready for it and staff up on what will be a busy day, but we cannot find a pattern to it. Any day could be overwhelming and any day could be really quiet. We've had them both this last week. Kind of dark here. Is, it, is that a bit better? Sensei Marjan is here. <laughs> I dropped in the other day, Sensei San. I know I really haven't been following. I'm sorry, it's been chaotic here. But I dropped in on your, your walk the other day, if, if you're here, and I can tell you exactly what time I dropped in. It was 5.57. How could I remember what time that I dropped into your stream? I stayed for a few minutes. Uh, you were walking somewhere uh, in a town in Kyushu, and you were just arriving at a corner, a traffic light corner. You were crossing the street, 
and across the street from where you were standing, we could see there was some kind of thing standing on the corner. Now, there were no people around, there were no crowds, but there were buildings and there was a little plaza and there was a, there was, it turned out that it was a clock. And as you walked across the street towards this thing, you lifted your head up and we could see at the top of this post thing, there was a clock. And below the clock, there were, it looked like musical instruments. There was a shape of a drum with a beater. There were organ pipes. And it was clearly, it was some kind of musical clock. And I thought, cool, 5.57, here we are at 5.58. It showed just like one minute or two minutes to go to this thing. So I thought we were going to get a real treat. You crossed the street then on the light, people, 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 got close to this thing. And you looked up and you said, oh, it's a clock. And then you walked away. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my God, we have a chance to hear some special little calliope and musical drum and musical clock. I guess you were, uh, you were tired. I think you said you'd been walking like nine hours or ten hours or something like this, and you were really beat, and you wanted to get to your uh, get to. And I think you said my hotel is just around the corner. It's about three minutes away. And I guess you were really, really, really interested to boom, get down and crash. <laughs> For someone who had just dropped in a moment before, we're going to hear this special clock, and uh, didn't happen. So, double back and pick it up. Okay. So I guess probably you didn't even notice that it was just two minutes, and it was going to chime or something. Yeah. We should look it up. There must be a YouTube video of it. I don't know where you were or even what town you were in. I'm sorry, but. Uh, <laughs> It was fun. It probably, it's Japan, it probably just went ding dong, ding dong, dong dong, ding dong. I don't know what it would do. If it was inside a shop, I get it. It can play time to go home, but uh, you know, whatever. Someone says scorecards are the ready. We're not going to have a, a super full peel. We have a chopped hunch to here. We have a trimmed piece of paper. It will not be one large steady peel. Not enough glue. Those senses said, I'm sorry, I hadn't been spending more time watching you this time around. I think when you're doing the Tokaido, I dropped in more often, but uh, this past week, I really haven't. Uh... Okay, what have we got? We have a double thing here, so just a sec, let's see this. Okay, so we go. So most of it, most of it's here, sure. The original one that I printed, because we put something on top of it, hasn't transferred. So what has transferred to the wood in this area is the one that I laid on top, the one with Photoshop data. And I, I probably should have mentioned, while I was laying it on, because we have the lines here, I could see exactly where it should go. We weren't using the registration marks. I can see the shape of the bird, the shape of the tanuki, and the border outlines. So the only part of the original transfer that is pasted down is this corner and you know I could say the same thing again I used the carved lines to outline these leaves rather than the uh, printed lines from the Photoshop file so for a peel here we can do the peel in two parts because this thing is cut here
And speaking of peeling, you know, the who's going to be here today? Uh, Udagawa san and Sadako san will both be here today, and they spent a lot of yesterday peeling. And we were really, really, really busy in the shop in the morning from uh, the beginning up until around one o'clock or two o'clock, I think. And then in the early afternoon, it got a lot quieter. And we'll talk about it later when we look at those prints I prepared for you. But they spent most of yesterday peeling. And we weren't peeling for, for carving. We were peeling actual prints. Okay, here's our top part. Oops, get back on track. And then can we peel this little piece? So we have now the three ladies yesterday spent most of the day peeling stuff. So we have lots more experts at this now. Let's get cutting. On my list of things I'm supposed to mention to talk about, there's a, I get a funny experience the last couple of days. Yesterday morning in my news feed, I know I use Google has a, an alert system available where you can in, you can put into the Google system you can put in alerts that whenever there's a, something that hits Google News on a specific topic, they will send you sometimes an email about it. And years and years and years ago, when we started our Ukiyo Heroes campaign, I did this. When we, when we had our Kickstarter campaign in 2012, I put in a Google alert for the phrase Ukiyo Heroes because we wanted to know what was happening. Were people talking about our campaign? You know, blah, blah, blah. How was it going on? And that has still uh, been there all these years. So every now and then, I get an alert from Google that says there is a news report about Ukiyo Heroes. And over the past couple of days now, I have received five such reports, all from the same thing, and all clearly a news, quote, news, unquote, article written by some kind of robot. And it, some robot has picked up the fact that our Ukiyo Heroes documentary is on Amazon Prime. Now, maybe this was initiated by the guy who made the documentary, and he's just doing PR, PR, or SEO or something. I have no idea. Or maybe it's a random robot has got it. But the point being that I found out, and we checked with the mods, our documentary, the documentary about our printmaking work, me and Jed, called The Art of the Game, seems to be currently on Amazon Prime in some markets. It's not here in Japan. I got the notice about it, quickly went to search, and Amazon Prime came up. Boop, not there. Wait, I gave the information to the mods last night, and they've checked, and apparently it is in America. I'm not sure about Europe or other areas. So the documentary is called Art of the Game, and it seems that in some markets at the moment it's on Amazon Prime. So if you're a member, you can maybe check this documentary out. A couple of points about it. When the guy made the documentary about us, this was back in 2017, he made a couple of big, big, big mistakes. He included uh, information and chat about uh, copyrighted material. We were making video, we were making woodblock prints based on video games. And that meant he was unable to sell the documentary in major markets because they were worried about uh, copyright claims. So the documentary failed in the marketplace, very much so. The other mistake he made was he gave it the same title as a previous documentary there was something, a documentary about basketball, maybe it's about Michael Jordan or Kobe or something, and it was called Art of the Game. And his documentary has the same name, Art of the Game. So two, two strikes for the guy, and the documentary really, really didn't fly. So that's all I know. For some reason, I got uh, information posts about this, whether there's some kind of uh, promotion campaign going on or whether a bored robot was looking for something to post about. I have no idea. The 
art of the game, how to control women using ma That's not the one. <laughs> not the one. That is not Dave's documentary, believe me. But a small sidelight about this too. I am insanely, I'm going to say I'm proud of this. I can't be proud of something you didn't do, that it's something that happened to you. There's this thing, what's it called? I am, IMDB, International Movie Database. I forget what it's called. There's, there's, a, there's a database out there of movies or whatever. And uh, when you get into that database and you look up stars, as in the talent, the people who are in movies, I have a spot in that database. You know, me and my buddies, Tom Cruise and, and all these boys. <laughs> so. <laughs> all the achievements that if you had given me my high school yearbook, what it, what's the thing they had in the yearbooks, right? Most likely to and least likely to. If you'd have picked the kid in high school who was least likely to ever appear as an actor in the IMDB, it would have been me. And there we are, I'm in there. Reframe. You should have yelled louder. <laughs> Next time, yell louder. We need a seat buzzer. We really do need a seat buzzer. Now we're okay, right? Sorry about that.
Lily pads. Today's uh, Monday. What's the day? It's the sixth today, I guess, to show. The other day on that would have been Saturday. Did we talk about it on the stream? I don't remember. The uh, in in my news feed early that morning had come a note about the the new Apple ad that dropped on Saturday, May the fourth. You know, the Star Star Wars Day. I think we were chatting about it. So during the rest of that day. That became now and then it became a topic of conversation here in the shop and on some of the guests. And at one point, I had been this. There had been some guests here chatting about this and that, nothing to do with Star Wars or anything like that. And we've been just chatting. They'd got some prints. And what frequently happens is after a group of people have been here, we chat, we say goodbye, out and out they go. And they actually end up standing outside for a few minutes. They're trying to decide where to go next or what to do. So Dave too. Also, I had a package to take upstairs. So after chatting with these people, boom. They went outside, and I did something else, then grabbed a package, and I went outside to go upstairs. And they were still there, so I, I overheard a little bit of, of what they were saying as I swept round to the door. And what was the thing? Somebody said, uh, using the Force, or something like this. They used to phrase something, something from Star Wars. So whatever, I just heard the sidelight of their conversation. I went upstairs, dropped off my package, came back downstairs. They were still there. So now I... I picked up on that. I said, I heard somebody here talking about the force, you know. And and then I guess I had probably said, you know what day it is today? And the guy knew. He knew exactly what day it was. I said, of course, of course, it's May the 4th, you know. And we're here. We, And then he said, we were here to see Skywalker, you know, because people seem to think sometimes I look like uh, some of the guys in, in the film there. But then I, th I thought I'd show off and I said, hey, did you hear about the new ad that Apple dropped this morning that's based on a Star Wars theme? You know, Dave is trying to, you know, I know everything, <laughs> whatever, show whatever. And the guy, he knew exactly how to handle Dave here. He said, yeah, of course I heard about it. You know, he said, I see, we, we were good. That's what we were talking about when you, when you came by a few minutes ago. You know, so, okay, okay. I said, yeah, yeah, good, well, good. Just let, you know, he said, and he said, well, did you know, did you catch the references inside? And now he's put me on my foot because I don't, I'm not anything, I don't know much about the Star Wars canon at all. I've only ever seen the very first Star Wars movie. I know really nothing about this stuff whatsoever. So I'm like, I, mean, I must have given a blank face. He said, the numbers, the numbers. You know what the numbers, right? And I had no idea, absolutely no idea what he was talking about. So at this point, that's okay. I'm, I'm the humble acolyte. And I said, no, I'm sorry. You're going to have to tell me what it means. And he then said, and I don't remember these and I don't know what they are. People out there will know what's going on. And he, he started to reel them off. The guy walks by the apartment building. And didn't you notice the numbers on the apartment building? And I'm like, I'm sorry. And it turns out that every number that appears in that little ad clip from Apple, the number on the bus, the number on the apartment building, whatever, the numbers here and there, there's numbers all over the place. They all relate to some specific number in the Star Wars canon. And he tried to explain. He said, that's the number of the serial number of the Death Star, you know. And I'm like... I had thought it was just being friendly. Have you seen this new thing from Apple? You know, and he was the nerd, nerdiest, nerdiest nerd. And he just, he, we're laughing about this. There's no, there's no uh, whatever. But all I knew is that, hey, that thing is somehow, it's about Star Wars. And he knew frame by frame by frame all the different uh, things that had been hidden in there. So, so if you're a Star Wars fan, grab the ad that Apple dropped on the weekend and check out the numbers like I guess they all have meaning to the people whatever so I don't remember the numbers it turns out that 3487 is the, the serial number of somebody's jet fighter or something I don't know <laughs> I just have to smile you know I'm, what can I say you know?
it's just so much fun, the conversations with the visitors that come here. We never, ever know where the conversations are going or what's going to be uh, thrown out or tossed out or chatted about. And, you know. So maybe this is the theme of today's stream here, numbers. I learned about the number eight in rugby, which I didn't know. Yes, there will be show and tell today at, uh, an, at 15 past the next hour, about 35 minutes from now. So if somebody's checking out these numbers, are the number on the apartment building is 1138. Whatever, the, the guy yesterday, he, he reeled off these numbers. He knew them. He had seen this ad, just whatever, that morning or something, I guess. And he knew all the references he had seen. And he knew 3570 says 4292. He just could reel all these numbers off. The insane level of knowledge about these movies. You know. Absolutely insane level. Good fun, just all in fun, you know. <laughs> He was proud of his knowledge, and he was also proud that I didn't know it, you know, that uh, he got a chance to teach somebody this, you know, so. And all of this is coming from a guy here who doesn't have an iPhone, uh, doesn't even have a phone, so, you know. Is my life improved or is my life uh, is my life worse? Am I worse off because I don't have a phone? You know? Well, okay, actually, I, there is an ex experience about that. Sadako and I went for dinner Saturday night after the, she was here on Saturday working. We went for dinner after the shop was closed, 
and she had made a reservation. It's in a little Italian restaurant. We've been there before. It was over in Ryogoku, near the, near the place where they do the sumo, just around the back street behind there. We'd been there before in winter. They have an outside terrace, and we'd been there in winter where you have to sit under a blanket and all that kind of stuff. So we went back Saturday night uh, on a normal day, nice and nice and peaceful, without freezing to death outside. So we get to the table, and on the table, there is a menu, but there's also just a little pizza QR code. And you know the deal. You know the deal. You're supposed to get your smartphone out, bap the QR code, enter in your order, and boom. Minutes later, the people in the kitchen, seconds later, the people in the kitchen get it, and away we're going. Now, when Sadako and I have been in this situation before, I say, please, please, look, let's just not do this. There's a menu here. Let's just use the menu. It's comfortable. We can see the pictures, whatever. And she's like, well, no, let's, let's do the system they want us to do. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to fight about this. She tries to beat the QR code. Problem one, the lighting is there. It's in a plastic thing. We can't do this. She doesn't have a real top quality phone. It takes us more than a minute or so I've got to hold it up and shield it from the light and she gets the code and we get to the menu and one there's no pictures two it's just a generic website this restaurant must have got some dude in the back to do it it's a list of stuff in like alphabetical order and we're trying to find the Caesar salad then we scroll down and down and down back up and up and up and up and as she's scrolling down 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 she does a one finger swipe and the app cancels and goes back up and deletes itself or something. We get the QR code out, bing, bing, again we go. We scroll down. She's being more careful now because this kind of finger scrolls it and something else kills the app. I don't know. Long story short, we get one item in. We get two items in. We try to find the drink menu. We get the third one in. She hits it again with her finger. The app cancels out, comes back, nothing in your shopping basket. At this point, and we've spent three, four, five minutes more on this at this point, like, we look at each other and like, I'm, I'm, you know, Sadako, please, let's just do this. Let's use the menu. And at this point, she has no leg to stand on because we have failed, utterly failed to put the menu in for this. So, of course, she happily agrees, puts the phone down. We call the boy over, you know. And yeah, click, click, click. Can we have this? Can we have this? Can we have this? Boom, and away he goes. You know? so, so I don't know if this is all, you know, I am still uh, not seeing a lot of evidence that says I need to go get a phone, you know. I mean, I, I'm cherry-picking my evidence here. I do not want a phone, so I look on episodes like this as being, see, we don't need a phone. But of course, there's lots of evidence the other way around, but uh, just give me a break. A phone a menu with no pictures on a, a phone app that doesn't work. The food was okay. We had uh, just one of their generic pizzas. It wasn't great. It came a bit cold, actually. It wasn't uh, nicely warm. And we had a nice salad and uh, what do we have? some fried chicken karage. And I'm happy on uh, the drinking, actually. It's kind of a boom right now in restaurants around Tokyo. It's something that wasn't here a while ago, but it's a boom at the moment, and I'm enjoying it while it is. In the beer menu, there's the usual menu, you know, Asahi Super Dry or a couple of imports, Heineken or something. But then in the beer menu, in many, many restaurants these days, they've put in something they're calling Shandy Gaff. And it's like a lager line kind of a drink. I don't know why they would call it Gaff, Shandy Gaff. I guess it's a foreign, foreign word. And I'm fond of that. I like that. It's pleasant. I don't really like throwing a cold lager down my guts, but... Uh, Okay, what we're going to do with this one. This one has, and as did this one, this little unit here has some of the ripples in it. And I think I'm going to leave those out for the moment. We're going to cut the block away. And later when we're doing our test printing, when I can see if just how perfectly this might be lined up. If I cut that super thin line from the ripple now, it's really possible that it won't be in exactly the right place. And the one down here, I cut this, but I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have waited, done a test printing, and then cut the ripple. Okay. 
So if somebody's on the other side, the, the menus on the smartphones could be good because there could be translation involved. So if you can't speak the Japanese menu, and if the if the iPhone menu or the, the, the smartphone menu has translation involved, then yeah, that would be a real benefit. No plastic food. This this restaurant was a little bit more upscale than that. We don't go to high high end restaurants, but this one didn't have plastic food outside. <laughs> so.
Someone's asking, do we show the printing process? I myself don't do much printing on streams. Uh, there's, a, there's a mechanical reason for that. For the carving, I can carve, put the knife down, talk, do something else, come back. At the end of the stream, put it away, come back tomorrow, pick it up exactly the same place. It's an easily start and stoppable process. Printing is not. Printing involves getting all the gear ready. Pilot checklist, wet paper, moist paper, brush, ready, go. Start. And once you start, if as a phone call comes in, you're in trouble because the paper dries out as you're going along. Printing is a process that doesn't really lend itself to these streams in the way that we're doing it like today. Having said that, we do do them. We had a printing stream mm, a few weeks ago. I printed a bunch of extra copies of, of, a, of a printer. What was I doing? The share certificates. So I had chosen an easy print job, one that I could do and still chat while we were doing it. So I'm sorry, there isn't much printing on these streams. If you want to see that, that's okay. The YouTube channel has mountains of it, tons of it. We have lots of it on the YouTube channel. But it's just not easy to start and stop as it is to do this job. So uh, I get it. I'm sure people would like to see more of it. There's no specific reason we try and hide it. It's just it's very difficult to manage given the uh, circumstances of how these streams work. The other thing too is that I'm still on the carving team here. There's four carvers at Mokohanka. I'm one of the four, but I am no longer a member of the actual printing team here. I do print now and then when they need an emergency backup or when something happens and we need some extra prints and nobody else can do it. But printing is not normally part of my job here now. Mostly for the reasons as I outlined. It's, it's a job that you can't just fool around with and do little bits, dribs and drabs at a time. Now that I've become the, the overall manager of what's now a sizable little business, I no longer have the freedom to spend, you know, three, four, five days on a job where I can't be disturbed. So no, we don't see a lot of printing on these streams, I'm sorry. But it's out there. Just hunt it up. It's out there. Did I print the Hokusai subscription one? Yeah, that would have been at the New Year, to show, Right at the exact New Year. So I did. And that was a relatively easy job, that it was grey tones. So let's talk about the documentary that we're talking about a few minutes ago, The Art of the Game. The trailer has a spoiler with video game heroes printing, and it looked nice. That was one of the, for me, the tragedies of that documentary. We made that documentary under extreme time pressure. It was a one-man video team, literally. There was no team of light people, sound people, director, blah, blah, blah. It was one dude with a camera. He flew over from California, 
we had prearranged all this. He had been to Jed's place to see a drawing being created. The drawing came over here. The guy flew over from California to watch me put the drawing on wood and start carving. And he only had about 10 days, and he wanted to also see the finished print. And when we were planning this, I just laughed at him. This print's going to have 26 colors. There's no way I can do the whole freaking thing start to finish in your time frame. It just doesn't happen. Get in the plane, go home, come back later when I'm finished, and we can, we can you know, show you the printing. And he wasn't able to do that. So we arrived at a compromise. He filmed me carving the key block. And then he got on his train and went off to see other places. He went to see the paper maker. I don't even remember what else he saw. He went out of town for a couple of days. And during that couple of days, I had to carve the full set of color blocks. Now, it wasn't humanly possible. So I carved a set of blocks that would put color on each area of the print. He got back here, we filmed it, ta-da, hold up the print, he's happy, clap, clap, he goes home, does his editing. But that was only about, again, I don't know the numbers, if there had been 20 blocks planned, that was only about 12 blocks. It was enough to make it sort of look like a print, but not the finished print. So for me, the tragedy of that documentary, one of the tragedies of that documentary, aside from the made-up story, is the fact that the print, close-up of this beautiful print, that's not the finished print at all. It was take it or leave it. That's all we had, all we had to do. Can't be helped. I think I'm, I remember, you know, that one of those scenes where I'm doing the printing on this and he says, can I zoom in, you know, and he's trying to zoom in on the print and I'm desperately trying to hold it in some way that my hand is covering some part that's not good yet, you know, whatever. So, <laughs> so in a sense, I wasn't really, uh, the documentary didn't fly. It didn't really get a good traction and didn't become a hit, didn't win any awards and stuff like this. So in a way, I wasn't too sad about that, you know. It's okay, it's okay, yeah. And, and I got a good good fun experience out of it. He managed to get a showing at TIFF, at the Toronto International Film Festival. And this would have been, I don't remember, 2016 or 2017 or 2018, I don't remember. He managed to get a showing there. And they paid me to come over. They bought me a plane ticket and, uh, and uh, whatever, paid my hotel. And I was flown over to, to TIFF. And they treated like a real, my God, they treated me like a star miniature star you know it's cool i had a, a label well what are you called i don't know there's a name in the documentary world for the person who's appearing in the documentary it's not star it's not a hero it's not it's a i forget it there's a word for so when i was there chatting with people i wasn't a director i wasn't a cameraman i was uh i forgot the word for it somebody knows it Specimen, talent, no, subject. It might be subject. I think it sounds, it doesn't sound familiar. Really subject. I can't remember. It could have been subject. It could have been some word that they, that they have in the documentary world that does this. Protagonist, no. Maybe it was subject. I don't know. So I have my name tag, blah, 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 with, with subject. So it was great fun. We had a big showing and there must have been, oh my God, in the room where they showed the thing, there must have been 20 people there. <laughs> my moment in the very dim sunshine. The film is okay, it's not great, and again, the same thing, this guy did the same thing that the Japanese TV programs do. They plan too much, and they come in with an advanced story. We talked about this exact same thing a few weeks ago, that, that docu one-hour documentary here on Japanese TV. 
they came in with a story and everything they filmed had to fit the story and they're trying to get me to say things that fit their their predetermined planned story i was really 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 disappointed by that i thought there was a much more interesting story in the back and that's not the story they wanted to tell but uh, when you're the, the subject of one of these things, you have nothing to say about how it's going to be edited or filmed or, or topic. How's our time? Are we okay? Still good? 9.02. Few minutes, 10, 12, 13 minutes to show and tell. Along, all the lotus are done now. Is that what they are? Lotus leaves or something on the pond? The tanuki is done. Now we're going to get this leaf. It seems to be settled now. There's going to be, I've got the plan, there are going to be uh, six, there are going to be three pieces of wood, a key block, and then a red, blue, dark green background, background water, and a water tone. There's going to be three pieces of wood both sides. It'll be eight or nine impressions, I think, for this one. So there won't be as much carving as I had originally thought. I think we can get away with six faces. And this is the third face of six. We did the key block, we did the backgrounds, and this is the third. So we're sort of halfway through once this is done. morning I know got a bit derailed on the food plan yesterday you know uh, yesterday uh, because it was so busy in the shop super busy in the morning we had four of us here three hired staff members plus myself but because it was so busy we couldn't dare go out and get lunch you know what we would during the week what normally happens is there's maybe three staff members in the shop and they take turns. Two of them will go for lunch, leaving one. When they get back, the other person goes for lunch. So we swap out, they go out for lunch. Not many of the staff members usually eat here. They go out for lunch. But on uh, yesterday, on Sunday, it was really, really, really busy. There was four of us here, but we didn't dare go two out for lunch, come back and two out for lunch. So we, we, we ordered in. We didn't order in, actually. I took a few minutes. I went out to a local uh, lunch shop. I brought back four packed lunches for everybody. And it got, we got really, really lucky. And just at that time, it became totally quiet for about 30 minutes. That's perfect. We had a 
little meeting at the back there, had our lunch. It just worked perfectly. Some days it doesn't. We get lunch and people are here and we're trying to, you know, food is still left at 5 o'clock and whatever. But it worked perfectly yesterday. But I had ordered a bit too much. So I had a big, big, big lunch yesterday. So come dinner time, I'm really not so hungry. So I had a light dinner. But I didn't get it real balanced well. So I'm really, 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 really hungry this morning. But if I eat now, after the stream, then I won't be ready for lunch. So once you get to my age, it's, it's, you really, really want things to happen the same each day, you know. And getting off the track spoils it. Oh, it's Sadako san, 907. What? Morning, morning. Hey? That's great. <laughs> what, what is she laughing at? Yeah. yeah. What, do you, what, do you think, what do you think she's laughing at? It was, it was you yesterday who told me, why can't you wear something different instead of the same? <laughs> yeah, I didn't say it wasn't me. Wow, what's going on? Hey, it's clean. It's clean. I have a clean shirt on. Hey, hey. Actually, it was, a, it was a gift somebody sent me. This is the year before the pandemic, 2019. Do you remember the Rugby World Cup was on? I doubt you remember that. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Hey. Listen to this. The music like that playing on the shop. She just woke up the shop computer. And the music playing there tells the shop staff that there's been an online order for a print that is also in the shop. So it's really important for us. Somebody online has purchased a print and the print is sitting here in the bins. So if we don't grab it soon, somebody else could buy it in the shop and we're in real trouble. So it's the first job of the shop staff every morning to pick out whatever might have sold online during the night and get it out of sight so that we don't end up double selling it. So. Did you find it? Good, thank you. Oh, from England.
I think that's the cutting done on this one. Next step, of course, not right now, and I'll be doing that later on the, during the day. The next step on this one is persuading, where we will bang away all the extraneous wood that we don't need from outside this, and it will leave a pattern looking something like this. The areas that print and the areas that we don't need. And you can sort of see how this is coming together. Those of you who have never seen this before, you can see the shape here and the shape here. We've got a negative. The leaves are gone from this block, and those leaves are going to be left on the next block, whereas the surrounding area will be gone. On this block, the surrounding area is still there. And we see there's a bird shape here. It's a bird on a nest. It's gone from this block. It's also going to be gone from this block. So there will be coming up another block. There will be part for the nest and another block for the bird. So bit by bit by bit, this is how woodblock prints come together. Those of you who have never seen this before. There is a video out there, lots of videos on our channel that show how this all does come together. Okay, it's 9.14. We're one minute early, but that's fine. We can move over to our show and tell mode because it's going to be double trouble today. What did I do with them? Somewhere here. The first part of our show and tell today. Let me get rid of the flask again. Well, maybe not. I don't, I don't need it. It's not nothing big, so it's okay. We can do it this way. Yeah, it's all right. Here now is the result from the ladies yesterday. Sadako and the other two ladies yesterday spent most of the afternoon and earlier. It's two days now. You came on Tuesday. I forget. No, Friday. Friday to do this. Huh? So these are the prints that I showed you a few days ago in that album of 100 prints. And we haven't got them all done yet. But the ladies have been soaking them in hot water and peeling off from the back. And for the most part, they've come out very, very, very beautifully. Sometimes it's difficult. When you've got a woodblock print that has been pasted together with something, it's difficult to know where they come apart. You've seen me do this. You've seen me take prints and split them. So the washi will split. The backing paper can also split. And their challenge yesterday was to put each one of those in water, soak it in water, and then try and find the point where the backing paper and the print could separate. And on the places where they got it just right, boom, the backing paper came off, and we have a print cleanly separated from its backing. And some of them, it came off easily. Some of them, it didn't. And there's a few cases where partly because of their inexperience, partly because it was just too difficult, they didn't get it quite right. If they pulled off part of the backing paper, then when it's dry, we can see backing paper still there. So back in the water and away they go again. And some of them, three or four of them, they might have got it a bit wrong and they pulled off part of the print. So what they took away was the backing paper plus part of the washi paper. This one, for example, is one such. And although that isn't our real goal, those prints end up being astonishingly beautiful to touch and feel. This print actually now is on thinned washi from the front. Although they spent, what, a half an hour in the water you guys put them in? About a half an hour in warm water. This has been washed in warm water and it's still beautifully crisp and clear. And it's now, it's thinner Thinner than a Kleenex to show, about the same thickness. I don't know what to say. It's hard to say. Mm, not quite as thin as a Kleenex, but pretty, pretty close to it. And the look and feel and touch of these now is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And Takami Zawa did such a nice job. Where's the scale? Here's my finger for scale. <laughs> And they did this, you know, no microscopes, no nothing, just carving. And they are carved. This is not photographically reproduced. They are carved. When you look close under the microscope, you can see places where the hair is, is dotted and uh, chipped. 
What a beautiful object, absolutely beautiful object. So these will now go to Wat Nabisan upstairs. And we're so happy. These would have been glued down. The album was published in Showa 12, right? Showa 12, 19, 1935 or 1937 or something. So these prints would have been made and glued down about 90 years ago. And they've been kept and stuffed in that album all that time. And we love to think about these. You know, they're inanimate objects, of course, but they love to have the feeling that they've been rescued. They're free now after all those years stuck in that album. They're now free. People can enjoy really, really carefully and tastefully the carving and, and appearance of these things. We couldn't make anything like this now, impossible. We were proud of our work, proud of what we're trying to do, but there's no way that we can make stuff like this. It's kind of a sad feeling for me to feel that we just can't make things as well as they were done 100 years ago. The excuse, of course, is the... Uh, materials are not here anymore and the trained people you know the guy who carved this must have trained all his life some of them are doubles we've got a double anyway this is not supposed to be today's main show and tell this is a recap of what we did the other day we maybe report some more because they're going to do some more soaking today if we have time this afternoon. What I want to do with the rest of today's show and tell time is this. Do you remember at the end of the last stream I showed you some black and white prints published by Takamizawa and I mentioned the Takamizawa history that they had had their start by making forgeries and the prints that I showed you really really did look like they had originally been made as forgeries. They weren't made clean and, uh, and sharp and bright they were made to look beaten up and old. And although that was Takamizawa's main uh, method, there clearly was a back story. They were trying to make forgeries. Okay, put away Takamizawa for a minute. We have a print I got here on Yahoo Auctions, oh, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. On the auction picture, it looked kind of interesting so I was willing to bid for it. Turned out nobody else was interested. I got it for something 3,000, 4,000 yen and when it arrived Dave is faced with a really interesting question. It's old. It shows all the characteristics of an original Haranobu print. <laughs> Somebody's outside the little girl. <laughs> Smile, you're on candid camera, so <laughs> she's going to be famous. <laughs> Back to the story. When it arrived and I got a hold of it, I had to say it shows all the characteristics of an original Harunobu print, and they would have made it in the 1730s, perhaps 1740s. Sadako and I visited the Victoria and Albert Museum in 1999 when I was preparing for my Sudimono albums, and they gave us access to the back room. They give, we went in the back room, there was a big table there. They brought down some, some boxes of prints and left us alone. And one of the boxes was Haranobu original prints because I was thinking about using some of those designs for my Sudamuno album. So we had a half an hour, an hour, an hour and a half to look through these things. And one of the trays was Haranobu originals. And I looked at them, felt them, held them up to the light. This print really, really seems to be a Haranobu original. The paper is something like the style. The paper, what's called the sunome, the, the chain lines in the paper, are not the modern width. They are narrower, just like the old paper from the 1700s. The chain lines run not vertically the way they do on all modern prints of this type. They run horizontally, which is what Chuban prints from Harunobu Zira. They were made one, two, three, four, cut from a piece of hosho. We would never do it this way now because it's too difficult to print against the grain. The paper is unsized. We have no idea how they could possibly print this without sizing. That technique is lost to this planet. And I'm not exaggerating. Nobody knows how to do this. So here we are. It seems to be a Haranobu original. But because Dave has been doing this with the Great Wave, you know this. There are so many high-quality Meiji copies made. I'm telling myself, Dave, don't 
get your hopes up. This is a Meiji reproduction. 99% sure this is a Meiji reproduction. There's no way you're going to find an original Harunobu on an auction site for 3,000 yen. So it sits in my folder. The other day, after we talked about this topic of forgeries and whatever, I do some searching. I go out to ukiwe.org and I try and find some other images of this print. And I find this. It's an image on the Metropolitan Museum of Art's website. Of course, of a Harnobu original print to their determination. How does mine compare with this? Well, the color tones are a little bit different. My green and their green are a little bit different. My blue seems a little bit nice. This blue is a little bit of a different mix than the blue they've got. But any, any prints from the old days, they were printed once, printed twice, printed three times. It's not rare to have a little bit of a color difference. What you need to look at is the blocks. So from the Met's website, I downloaded the image and I blew up a couple of places on it. This is a close up of the guy's head on the Metropolitan copy. Let's zoom in on the guy's head in my copy. There's a defect in the carving here. And look at that, over on their copy, there's a defect in the carving. Top of the nose here, see the little bit of a little bit of a black dot at the top of the nose, not cleared off? Over on his copy, look at that. There's no way that could be reflected in a copy. Let's look at the lady's head. couple of things jump out right away. Look at the bottom here. There's a pop in the block here. Over on the original copy, there's a pop in the block. When you look at her hairs, there's a long one, a long one, a long one, a short one. See the short little hair? I can't get without scratching this print here. There's a bunch of hairs of a certain length. Then one of them got cut a little bit shorter. Over on the original copy, there we are. We have the same short thing. It really, really, really starts to look like the print I've got was made from the same blocks as the one in the Metropolitan Museum. So at this point, Dave is now thinking, these guys know what they're talking about. This is an original Harunobu. So I still thinking that this is now an original. But again, Dave, remember, the museums themselves are full of forgeries. Back in the 1880s, 1890s, 1900s, the Westerners were here buying this stuff. The craftsmen were still had the original paper, original techniques. They're still making forgeries for the West. So being in the Met, me having a copy that's the same as the one in the Met still doesn't guarantee that I've got the original. One more data point. The Museum of Fine Arts in Boston also has a copy of this one and on their website. Totally different coloring now. And I didn't zoom in on all the parts for you because it's easy for me to tell you this one clearly is different block sets. The color, the carving for the plants in the back are a different block. The carving of the patterns are a different block. Carving of the stone at the back is a different block. So what I think we've got here is this. The copy here in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts based on just the information we have here, would, I guess, maybe be an original from back there. Those guys, you know, sort of know what they're doing. The copy in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, I would guess, is probably going to turn out to be an optimistic, you know, it's not really an original. It's a Meiji era reproduction, I think. And Dave has the same thing. So I'm not getting excited about this. This is not a, a $25,000 print. The value it would probably be if it wasn't original. But for me, it doesn't matter because it's got the same characteristics. The feel, the paper, the touch, the carving, the blend, the pigments. It's in all essential, important points to me. It's just as good as an original from 1740. You gotta feel this. You gotta. You wouldn't believe what it feels like. How soft. There's no sizing in the paper at all. 
It's absolutely beautiful. There were two auctions that day for Hot and Rubber Prints, one and two, and there was a bunch of other stuff going on. I got a bit frantic. I missed one, and I got this one, and I missed the other one. I could have had two of these things. So I'm saying, are there other museums with more originals we could compare with? That's all I could find. I was only able to find, at the moment, these two versions out there. It seems this was not a really popular Hot and Rubber design. I don't know. So yeah, you know, as more copies were found, we could get more checking, no idea. And it would really, really be fun if I was in New York one day, whatever, to take this with me and drop in and talk to the curators there, if they were interested. They're probably not, but whatever. It's been folded and bashed up, very, very common. The, the Haranuba prints we saw in the Victorian Albert that day really had this look and feel. Paper does last a long time, but we're talking about 1740. 1840, 1940, 250 years, more than 280 years. Paper gets soft. Someone saying, just skin oil damage these. I'm touching it with my bare hand. There's nothing I'm going to do to it now here that is going to hurt it any more than normal passage of time has done. We do not need to put this in a, a nitrogen atmosphere. I'm not going to hang it on the wall, absolutely, that would, that would fade a lot of the colors. But normal care and tear, no problem, normal wear and tear, no problem. Okay, there we are, a little bit of a backstory on this. And if some of you are here one day and you're visiting the shop and you want to see this and I'm here, ask me, we'll pull it down and you can have a look and a feel, see what it's all about. So, <laughs> Okay, let's get out of here. It's now Monday morning, the last day of our big super Golden Week holiday. Coming up in two weeks is going to be the Sanja Matsuri, and maybe we'll try and get some video of that, because again, it's going to be absolutely chaotic, the Saturday and Sunday. For now, time for me to sign off. It's Monday morning. I'll see you in three days from now. I will almost certainly be still carving some of these color blocks. Let's put the outside camera up for a couple of minutes. Last day of the holiday, and I'll bet you that little girl we saw a minute ago, and this couple here with the kid, they're waiting for the ninja to open at 10 o'clock. Look at him, he's looking at his phone, he's looking across the street. That little girl is almost certainly gonna be getting a ninja experience this morning. There he is, he's looking right at the ninja place. Okay, I better shut this down. We better get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, gang. I'll see you next time. Three, two, one, down we go. Thank you again.